and welcome to Solely Singleton, episode 179. I'm your host, Brad. This is my co-host, Eric. How's it going? We have an exciting mystery episode for everybody today, except for those of you who can probably <laughs> read the title, but it's a mystery to Eric. Yeah, I was told that you had show notes for this topic and don't worry about it. And currently I'm staring at show notes that literally just say mystery topic time. I'm mildly concerned. So I went and did the unthinkable. I updated my cube. Holy, Holy shit. Shit, shit, shit. Okay, this is interesting. So the first thing you'll notice. 630. We have added 90 more cards to the cube. Yeah. There was a solid few days where it was a 720, but I refused to go that high. Yeah. It that's... makes it too hard to get actual decks together. Some interesting exclusions, though. I went very into a bunch of synergistic stuff. There is a lot of decks you can draft that interweave and have different overlaps and stuff like that. Because of that, just increasing 90 cards was not enough to get all of it in there because some of these have to go deep in order to be draftable and not, you know, never happen. Right. Uh, so we lost some cards that people would think you're insane for not playing. I cut Kithian Hero of Akros. I'm aware he is an amazing one drop. Yeah. But Kithian doesn't do anything for any deck. It is a one drop two one with upsides. Technically being a human is nice, I guess. Yeah, I mean, when you're increasing the cube card count to 630, it does mean that if you want a synergistic deck, it needs more density. Yeah. Then if you just, like, added cards and kept the density where it was, it would be even more difficult to get those synergies. So it makes sense. Yeah, so basically, if a card was not a personal pet of someone in our playgroup, it was up for cutting. Other exclusions. I finally killed Brimaz for Eric. <laughs> Funny. Archangel Avacyn is out, as we discussed doing last year, and then we discussed again, and it's just gone. Yeah. Uh, sadly, the one that I wanted to bring in for it had the same problem of not being for any deck, so it also ended up cut. I cut Gideon Blackblade. He's fucking boring. He's good, but yeah. Elspeth only has Sun Champion in the cube. I got rid of Knight Errant and Sun's Nemesis, both of which are very good magic cards. Yeah. But I wanted to play Wandering Emperor, and it and Knight Errant are the same fucking magic card. Yeah. They're not actually. Don't give me your lecture. I see the, the Wandering Emperor, and I'm like, yeah, I guess I could see that for Knight Errant. I would like to play Sun's Nemesis, too, but I'd have to find a cut again. It's not the biggest loss. No, it's not. It's a good card. I like it. It's interesting as well. But I also cut Secure the Wastes, which it's a fine magic card. It does nothing to me. Yeah, I was like, you've always been unimpressed by it. Yeah. A big thing. I got rid of all the snow stuff. I only care about Dead of Winter. Yeah, that was the worst one. Like, to me, the snow stuff exists for Dead of Winter. Because that card, I really do like that card a lot. But it's a lot of commitment for one card. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I was going to change it so that they were basic lands matter... And I was going to change the colorless cards to instead be basic land mana cards. Yeah. And like actually get like really nice proxies made for everything. Right. That I could see them coming back for in the future, but honestly, it's not that big a loss. No, it's not. We, we have a lot of options nowadays. So getting into blue, we talked about doing it. We knew I was going to do it. Ninjas is gone because I want to play my artifact deck. Like, yeah. Yeah, there really is not room for both because they're so opposite of each other in what they're like trying to do in the sections. And yeah, I mean, the ninjas were great, but... Tempo creatures still do exist to some extent. You can still draft a Bant Spectrum Tempo deck just fine. Yeah, I mean, it looks like, like Brazen Borrower, Nadir Kraken... I did get rid of some of them, though, like... Luteril Core, Warkite Marauder. Luteril Core just got upgraded to Suspicious Stowaway because I've always hated Luteril Core having the <laughs> whole shadow bullshit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Warkite Marauder is just a sad loss, but I needed to do more specific things. Yeah, that's fair. And you brought in Spellskite. You love that card. Yeah, I, <laughs> I got rid of a lot of the three drop uh, Mana War variants for new ones. Like, we have Baron and Aether Channeler, which are the new Mana Wars. 
Holy shit, Aether Channeler. <laughs> they, yeah, it's insane. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Having it made me comfortable cutting, like, Cloud Conceer, which is just generically good, but does nothing for anything. Yeah. Uh, Sakarn Infiltrator is a much more interesting variant now. And yes, I did include Warhammer cards. I was just going to say, wow, Warhammer cards. I For our playgroup, they are fine. Yeah. I still hate Universes Beyond in general, but I will play these ones because they are good for us. And you can ignore the Universes Beyond you don't like, like Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> which I'm aware technically isn't even labeled as Universes Beyond. Go fuck yourself. It was like, that's not actually, but you know. It's Universes Below. <laughs> uh, a big cut is I did get rid of Narset, Part of Avails. Yeah. It's not really a ban, but at the same time, it's like a... Yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Uh, I did get rid of a lot of the more aggressively slanted counters and stuff like that, like Memory Lapse. Uh, Days is back out because it boomerangs in and out of this cube so often. Well, yeah, and I mean, it's just one of those, like, those types of tempo things are great in, like, the ninja tempo, where, like, you're really trying to push it. But, yeah, I, if you're trying to move more towards the artifact control, you want more hard, like, counters. So moving into black, we don't have braids anymore. It's... It's fine. Sad. Yeah. <laughs> I completely, <laughs> like... I completely changed the black five drops. None of them are the old ones. That's disappointing, but I see Street Wraith, and I love Street Wraith. Yeah, it's technically not a five drop, but whatever. <laughs> it's not at all a five drop. <laughs> this this sorted it into five drops. That's not correct, and I'm not correcting it until I'm at my own main cube. I'm not doing it twice. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple Necrons in there. <laughs> there is. Uh, we'll get to them when we do inclusion type stuff. But yeah. there is some changes in red that are psychotic looking. Uh <laughs> I didn't cut any of like the tier one red one drops, and there are more one drops than there were by a considerable margin. That's true. However, there's some fucking weird ones. It has there. to do a lot with how I've changed red and white up a lot and red and black up a bit. And... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's looking I at mean... him like, what the fuck? <laughs> I think I see what's going on. I'll, I'll walk you through <laughs> on the inclusion half. There's there's some interesting cycle discard stuff that, that you've got going Correct. on. Correct. I still don't like Goblin Welder. I, I just don't like Goblin Welder. He's but... been almost cut three times since I started test drafting last week. Uh, I fucking hate Goblin Welder. I actually like Goblin Engineer more than Goblin Welder, which is fucked up. That is kind of <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Goblin Welder is the worst tinker variant i'm not playing tinker in this by the way i'm not no that's that is not okay i'm not going back to the old tinker days no i i would we would we would be having words brad about the fucking tinker in this era the biggest loss in red is the wildfires are finally dead yeah we knew i was doing that last year it yeah it was happening they lasted like years beyond what they should have really but that's fine. That's sad. Hilariously, green now has more one drops than red. Green has the most one drops in the cube now. That's... I I had to do it for density reasons when you look at density only for certain archetypes rather than in total. I see that uh, Vengefine and Golgari Grave Troll made it. Okay. <laughs> look, all I had to do was make sure I cut Questing Beast and Thrun. Yeah, it was like all we had to do was get rid of all of these good cards and put in Benjvine and Gari Grave Troll. Speaking of getting rid of good cards, Eric, I got rid of your favorite Garrick. <laughs> Relentless. Would you like to take a moment to pour one out for your favorite Garrick? Get fucked, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Nessa voices on your cars here. <laughs> we'll never look back at you ever again. <laughs> <laughs> it's more I the actual one for one replacement was I added Vivian on the hunt for you because she's another pod. And I was like, this is the most for Eric transition <laughs> I can make in this cube. That's hilarious. <laughs> we did remove regrowth finally and just have Balagad recovery instead. It's slightly worse on the front face, but it's so much better than regrowth as a magic card. Hardened scales. Whew. 
I saw a bunch of support for it, but yeah. Well, we'll get into it. There's there's more to that story too. I'll tell yeah. you when we get there. Oh, with the druids out. That's sad-ish. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That was my yeah. reaction when I was cutting it. I was like, Oath's in here. That's a free cut. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> it's like, I need to cut another green card. I'm like fanning through all these cards. I'm like, I love all these cards. Oath of Druids. <laughs> I love you too, and you're out. <laughs> exactly how it went. Uh, Demir is a complete changeover, obviously, because that deck is entirely different. Right. Ninjas for yeah. Bolas. Yeah. <laughs> Very minor changes for most of them. It's just like updating old cards to new cards. Uh, yeah. Within the same spectrum of what things do. Like, right. I'm not. I'm not changing Orzov's identity. I'm just changing cards in Orzov. Please, priest of fell rights, huh? Yeah, it's neat. I don't know. It it was a spicy last minute one. Like yeah. I could just add cruel celebrant to make sure I have a hundred variants of blood artist, but like it's probably not needed. I I wanted to do something fun in the last slot. Oh, uh, it's, it's fine. It's it was like I looked at it and I was like, it should probably still be cruel cruel celebrant. But that's fine. I'm not. So I'm not gonna. When you get to Boros, the jig is up, and you'll know exactly what I did. <laughs> okay. Okay. Boros is finally an interesting deck that I might be able to convince people to draft. Uh, we've added an equipment theme. We've kind of been talking about this for a while, and I'm fully on board. Not entirely certain that these Boros cards are there yet. <laughs> so like, <laughs> Rayev is like on the edge of there. It's a two drop, so it gets a little bit of pass. Astor is like, he's okay. Yeah. Brenor, we're actually probably going to play the arena variant. Yeah, the thing is, is like, Brenor is solid as he's printed. Yeah, for everybody at home, uh, Brenor was part of the thing that made me give up doing this last year. Yeah. Uh, they did the, the arena thing in like February this year, I guess, where they were like, hey, we made a version that we actually thought about and was proper to put into magic instead of the one we did because of neon dynasty afterwards. Uh, yeah. And I was very fucking angry that they just stopped caring about thinking about, you know, two sets later and just released him like that. But well, yeah. And I mean, it was also one of those where it was like, they clearly just like stopped caring about like, this was a printed magic card. And it's like, our, our arena thing is going to be different. Who gives a shit? There was complex reasons why I gave up on this last year. But, yeah, I mean, uh, the extra toughness is actually pretty big. Um, I think as it's printed, it's still an interesting card, but probably play it with the fixed version. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you added, like, a decent amount of the Warhammer ones. I actually did. They, they fit well with what I was doing, and yeah. it let me go through with some of my themes. So, like, uh, let, let's finish up the big exclusions there's not many left um i cut winter orb i cut smokestack yeah i have no feelings about what i just did i'll admit to it you uh, hate winter orb <laughs> i despise it oh uh <laughs> so i did something that we have gotten actual countless emails about over the last four years uh new cube drafters always ask me how important gaia's cradle is I had it in my cube because I own one and it's a fucking toy. Yeah. I cut it because it's a fucking toy and it's not that great. It's like, it's only ever win more or absolute trash. I, uh, yeah. It, it can be good. It, it can be busted. But... It can be absurd, but it's, it's not like a card. Anyone in our group loves. It costs literal thousands of dollars. Is it up to that much now? Yes. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> so i was like you know what fuck this card so yeah. there you go new people who are making cubes wondering how important it is i don't give a shit card's not that good but toyerian academy on the other hand <laughs> toyerian academy i have an altered one of actually so yeah my love for that card is very different <laughs> yeah it is yeah it is so that takes care of the big exclusions. As a reformat of my cube, it's actually not as insane as you may believe. 391 of the cards are the same as they were 
years ago. It is a big change, partly because we're going to 630 and partly because of how I focused the changes. So let's get into those. Starting off, you'll notice that I broke Singleton. I went double fetch. People have asked us about doing an episode on it. And I said, I think it would be a positive for most environments. I love legacy land bases. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. And because of one of the things we're doing, I'm pushing harder into a lot of the themes we used to run, like the lands deck. Yeah. Good old Gwen Decker, Cube Cobra Boy, has convinced <laughs> me, along with several other people, to try out Field of the Dead in my cube. Because yeah. of that, I went pretty hard on like pushing more lands in, even if some of them are a little questionable. Uh, yeah. To be honest, not many of them are. Like, lanes are gross. The thing is, is like, yeah, a lot, there's there's a lot of just strong lands now we've gotten. Yeah, so I'm not too worried about that. I did go slightly lower than I usually do on our amount of multicolor cards to the cube overall. Yeah, which is fine. So an odd thing is I added three color cards. I did not add one of every Sharder Wedge. Jund is missing one. Abzan's missing one. I think everyone else technically has one now. Uh, there was a time when it was three. There was a time when I had three in Grixis alone. Uh, I played around with a couple different variations. Trying to figure out, like, which Bolas do you actually want? <laughs> uh, no, I think I only ever had one Bolas in any of my iterations. Okay. I, I've, like, locked in on Dragon God being the one I play. That's fair. It's probably not, like, my all-time must-pick favorite Bolas, but it is the best one on the cube ability versus hype factor. Right. It's something that, like, if you draft it, there's, like, a reasonable chance that you're actually going to put it in your deck and play it. Yeah. Compared to a bunch of the other Bolases, which is, like, I drafted this because it's really cool, and I, like, I have a 20% chance that it's actually going to make my deck. <laughs> <laughs> I also ended up doing a four color card in Omnath just to try him. It's interesting. I don't really care. Yeah, but we've got one five color card because it's not really a five color card. It's a it's an either or. The five color is why we're here. It's the prismatic bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, Asika is the front side. Um, it's the oh no, I've fucked up. You can argue her front side is like the fail case, like whatever. It is. Worst case. It absolutely is the fail case. Worst case, shitty mana dork. Yeah. But you're here for the backside, like. Yeah. And it's, it's a it's a cool option. And like the fact that it has a fail case and it's not just like an uncastable five color card. Bingo. And that's why I didn't do, <laughs> I liked the twin headed dragon card from like uh, Devil May Cry. Yeah. Uh, that one was cool. <laughs> But it was literally five color or bust. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm not doing Oath of Druid anymore. It would be nice for show and tell, sneak attack, reanimate. It's fine on all those. But I think this is a neater card and it's got the, the safer option on it. We'll start here. Yeah. But I could see myself changing it out for the dragon to go for that. Yeah. And I mean, it'll also be interesting to see how the double fetch works out for mana bases. Like... How easy is it to get five color? Yeah, uh, I think it's easier with my test drafts. You have to, you're a green deck still. Like, yeah, you're green playing other colors. The only alternative is you're the blue, black, either red or white as your tertiary color artifact deck. And mm -hmm. you can just oops all colors. Yeah, where you're just like, you pick off a couple off color talismans and just like, sure. But I don't think that one really is going to play a five color card. It's just, it does that sometimes. Right. Yeah. You may be a four color deck on a technical level where you can actually cast four different colors. And honestly, you may just do it to value Golos on occasion. Yeah. That being said, Golos is fine if you're playing a red green lands deck that actually has access to all five colors, which is kind of the intent there. I was like, that's like kind of like the point of yeah. having that as an option. I went pretty hard on the lands deck. Basically, the the Renin Six deck has never been stronger. <laughs> uh, scary. That's you scary. You don't you don't need Renin Six to feel unfair. It's good. I mean, at the same time though, like increasing the cube count makes it more difficult to get strip waste. So true. There is actually Dark Depths combo in here. I saw the Dark Depths. That's interesting. I think it's a step too far, but I wanted to see if it would work. It's probably not going to work. 
Is there any... I didn't see any other real part of that combo. Dark Depths, Thespian Stage. And I believe Thespian Stage with Urza Saga does something broken, but I can't remember what. Yeah, but there's no, like, uh, Vampire, Hex Mage, that kind of deep nonsense. No, I didn't I didn't go that far. Okay. Uh, to be honest, Hex Mage is so out of contention. Yeah, that's kind of what I was... I was like, I hope you didn't, because that's There are not... cards in the Black 2 Drops that I didn't play that I should be playing... <laughs> they like i'm like but yeah. i want to try out these ones first and then we'll right. move to other ones that's fair that's fair uh, there is an impressive amount of good magic cards nowadays yeah i mean it's we've even like four years ago we were already like it's difficult to make cuts for new cards to test like maybe we should increase the cube count size <laughs> yeah and and i increased it and i was still dying for spots yeah, makes sense. Uh, so let's get into the decks. Yeah, um, I mean, it looks like white is still, you know, it's got the white weenie, it's got the human stuff, but there's also a plus one, plus one counters. So this is literally today. This is what I was doing this afternoon. You added the uh, abs and falconer? <laughs> yes. So up until today, there was an enchantment deck in here. Yeah, I noticed that uh, there's no... We talked about it last year, about adding it and finally testing it out. It took very few drafts to figure out it sucks. It's just not on the same power level. It's terrible compared to anything else. It's not like the artifact deck, where it's got fantastic bleed all over the place and great synergy with everything else. That's true. It's literally just enchantments and shit that cares about enchantments. Right. And you have to run bad enchantments real quick. <laughs> Yeah, I played and only every so many good of those. aura and then 10 more auras. Yeah, and there's only so many of those enchantment cares yeah. that are like good. So step one, I removed all the bad enchantment cards and said, maybe I'm just thinking it needs too much density to work. Yeah. Three drafts later, I cut all of them. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> and uh, so now we went to plus one, plus one counters in green, white instead. That's the color spectrum that... I had the enchantments in. There was a minor amount in blue. Uh, right. I had a very spicy, you could draft all of Helm combo. Uh, you could do <laughs> energy field. The whole legacy deck was here. Oh, that's awesome, dude. I mean... Speaking of which, I just realized I have to cut Helm of Obedience. I forgot to get rid of that when I got rid of the enchantment deck. <laughs> Oops. Oh, I forgot Rip, too. I guess you could still play Rip Helm. I was like, Rip is still here. Rip is not supposed to be here. Neither is Helm of Obedience. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. They'll probably get swapped for something more general, to be honest. Likely, especially because seeing what you're doing with black and green. Yeah. I think of Rest in Peace is probably not a healthy card. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. It was, <laughs> so... it was something that was a very long series of tests to like yeah if i don't do rip helm the enchantment deck just sucks ass if right. i do rip helm it's incredibly caustic to certain matchups <laughs> just a bit <laughs> which is which is why it's so good in legacy like yeah. it's so fun <laughs> i'll probably be removing rip helm before this goes live and you'll see two generic cards there that weren't there before anyway <laughs> um fair enough so we went with plus one plus one counters and now that's in the bant spectrum which isn't that far off i mean we had already had like the plus one plus one counter kind of thing from the combo deck yeah the thing is a lot of plus one plus one counter cards once you have the creature combo deck in your cube already yeah are just generically good magic cards right and then you've got the couple extra you need just to like make that a hard theme yeah. Like, you do have to go and add Experiment 1 back in, Pelt Collector, the new wolf I forgot the name of, uh, Ascendant Pack Leader. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Like, those those are the green one drops I added in, and I couldn't cut Mana Dorks to do that, which is why green has a ton of one drops. Yeah, I mean, that's that's always the, been the problem for green. Um, green aggro, all of that stuff is, like, you have to have a density of one drop mana producers. Yeah. Or you, you just don't why are you playing green at that like if you're not supporting that don't play green just cut it out of your cube it's not good um so yeah i i 
understand having to bump that up that much. Yeah. So uh, also in white, there is some artifact support stuff. Specifically, there is some aggressive artifact support stuff because of the equipment deck. It works both ways. I didn't go for the full artifact aggro package. I just did the best ofs. Like, these are good in the equipment deck. Right. And they're still the strongest thing that you would put in an artifact deck. And they'll just work generically in aggro that has, you know, a normal setup. Yeah, I mean, we did learn a decent amount of, like, what are the good ones when we tested it before. And these do seem, especially because we got new things like like Dancing Sword. Oh, yeah, let's go. Do you want to know <laughs> the heresy that almost happened? I almost cut Thalia. <gasps> Which one? <laughs> two drop. Three drop I fucking murdered. It's like, <laughs> you murdered the three drop one. Is murdered it. <laughs> uh no two drop thalia she's still in here i'm not that psychotic but i got close yeah i that would be insane i was like i need a two drop slot i'm like looking at them all i'm like all of you are for specific decks except thalia <laughs> <laughs> but you're just so dumb good uh yeah so she's a human that's my argument that's my entire <laughs> argument she's a human that's a fair enough argument <laughs> Got to have something. Uh, Honestly, you don't have that many humans in two, other than, like, like you added some, but, like, Wall of Omens, uh, Stoneforge Mystic, Self of Spirit. Like, Wall of Omens is my only real, like, defensive two-drop. Yeah. Yeah, and there's just some awkward stuff where, like, now that we have Lion Sash eating up a slot, that's not a human anymore. Humans is still right. fine. Uh, yeah, so, like, to, I, do a quick, still enough. to do a quick filter. You still have 21 of them in white. Yeah, like it's not going to be a problem and I doubt you'll ever get to a point unless magic drastically changes how they deal with humans. Well, if they keep on adding new made up fucking stupid animal things, a glyph, gilf, gif, 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 fuck d d <laughs> Anyway. Meanwhile, I was like, is he going to say Astartes? No, <laughs> I don't. Oh, I may have added one Astartes. Let me check. No, I did not add an Astartes. At one point, I debated one. Skyboon Evangelist is an interesting. Uh, yeah, it's. I don't. I don't know. It okay. So it and what's his face, Absan Falconer. Mm-hmm. One of them will probably die. Absan Falconer seems fine to me, just because like it's a three drop. <laughs> yeah, but I think Skyboon <laughs> is the one that does more as a magic card. Yeah. It's true, but it's a five drop and dealing with like other cards that are good <laughs> in five drops. I don't know. It'll it'll be interesting to see how it actually plays in these decks. Like I know how it generally plays, but yeah. yeah, I think that's everything in white. Like there's still some the good parts of Flicker is still here, like Ephemerate's still here. Yeah. It's not like it's totally cut, but I got rid of the bad ones that we weren't really happy with. We do have a lot more equipment in the cube now because of the equipment theme going on in boros right uh which is great because there's a lot of overlap as we get through these archetypes we can start talking about them more but there's a lot of like the artifact deck and the equipment deck are not in the same colors but when you play a tri-color deck you will end up bleeding cards that were intended for one into the other and it works very well when you draft them and see them together yeah yeah, I mean, like, portable holes, just a good card, and it's an artifact. So like... I've also learned that I can make the artifact deck a lot faster than I used to. It used to be the dirtiest deck, right? Oh, yeah. Like, you did nothing until, like, turn eight. Yeah. You just tried to stay alive. Now I can go for, like, a really mid rangey artifact deck. Okay. Because I've got the equipment stuff going on up front, you could run a, a more front-heavy version. Necron's actually helped with that a lot, but we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> That was the thing that put me over, actually, on, on having the 40k stuff. Because, like, a couple of them, I was like, I I don't know if I want to do this. And then I was, like, looking at it and how much they could do for the artifact decks and the fact that it would bleed into making that bridge to the more aggressive spectrum. I was like, fuck it. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense because there's some good black cards that are, yeah. But blue, I mean, it looks basically what I expect when... You're cutting ninjas and adding Tezzeret. You said, my blue section looks very typical. The first card on the list is Hapless Researcher. The second is Hedron Crab. A few spice. <laughs> <laughs> A few spice in there, definitely. 
Okay, so because I sound like a madman admitting those, they are here for a very specific deck. That's actually a couple decks. Yeah, I was like, there's a lot of bleed over. I mean, that's the same thing with like why you have frantic search. Yeah, there is a ton, a, a metric shitload of grave play going on. Yeah, I have a Vengevine deck in here. I am running <laughs> Hollow One in here. I am running. That's, that's the insane one to me. <laughs> I am running Basking and Blazing Root Wallas. Yeah, I saw I saw the blazing, and I was like, I know he's gone deep. <laughs> so uh, many, many moons ago, I made a legacy deck that was a Hollow One legacy deck. Yeah, it was good. It was like four colors. It was mediocre, but it was good for a random fucking brew. Right. At the time, it was missing a couple key pieces that would later end up added, and then it ended up actually being a legacy deck. I think it ended up in John. Mine required blue back then. You had to run like Hapless Researcher and stuff to get it going. Yeah, But because of my experience with all that and loving that deck and loving what that deck became later on, I really wanted to bring it back into my cube. However, those cards suck and it's very parasitic if you don't build your cube for them. We talked about this on cards you would build a cube for. Right. I built a cube for them. (laughs) (laughs) So, So there is a lot of bleed over with this archetype. So we have a basic Graveyard Matters. Putting things in the graveyard matters. Discard matters. uh, Creatures caring about graveyard size. Lands caring about yards. uh, Playing things from yards. There there is a lot of overlap relating to that now. It is not like Green Black has a deck where you can play with your graveyard, kids. This is like half the fucking cube. (laughs) Basically everything other than white. Yeah. Yeah. So that is why the first two cards in this list is Hapless Researcher and Hedron Crab instead of real blue one drops to play. I mean, Hedron Crab is legitimate. Is legit. Yeah, especially on double fetch. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you can real quick have a yard. Yeah. So like that one is actually defensible. Like Hapless Researcher is you've gone probably too far. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I have successfully drafted the deck twice out of four attempts. That's not bad. It's hard because the deck doesn't have flagship pack one pick ones. Right. So when you start your draft, you kind of like have to see in pack one. Like it's a very rough, weird start. It'll work better when you are playing how we normally play, which is doing a minesweeper draft. Yeah, there's a little bit more table talk and, and signals that are obvious. There's more table talk. You you can make good friends by picking up weird cards nobody but you is going to like, because then you're not fighting over cards that other people are all fighting over. You're flipping more cards up for other people to see. I think it's going to work very well when we play Minesweeper. When you play a generic draft, it's a little weird because you kind of just have to blindly go for it at a certain point. And it's not like you're really sending signals because a lot of those cards are just like weird. <laughs> you know, it's not like like clearly they've not taken yeah. this thing. So I know what they're doing. No one no one on the wheel notices Hedron Crab is gone. <laughs> no, no. <'cause, laughs> sure, whatever. <laughs> yeah, um, that that does make it a bit more difficult. OK, so so while we're still in blue, the other stuff that's still here. You still can play Tempo just fine. Blue-White Tempo still exists. Oh, yeah. yeah. You've got the Spells deck. I even went as far as to test out Haughty Jin. I don't think it'll be good, but you know. Uh, it might be okay. Displacer Kitten is not good enough, but it was fucking adorable, and it it's a flicker card, and I was like, fine, I'll try it. It's going to get cut That's fair. next time I update. Yeah, it's, it's definitely <laughs> the thing that gets cut. But In testing, it probably already should be cut, but I'm going to let it live. <laughs> You don't like Venser that much. I don't like Venser that much. <laughs> Urtai was in for a few minutes, but it's just when I play the artifact deck, Demir is full too quick. Yeah. Um that makes sense. Anyway, there's there's a lot of no brainer. You're gonna go through the blue section and see all the stuff you normally expect, plus a couple questions of like, why would you run oh, because he wants to fill the yard, so this is better than the alternative in this case. Right. The interesting is like how much time you have, like Nexus of Fate, Time Warp, Temporal Manipulation. That one you can blame Ryan Sachs. Um, yeah, I, I remember him talking about it and like 
I'm interested on how it actually plays. You you have all of the good time spells in here now, mm-hmm. and you, our general audience doesn't know this. My brother is obsessed with <laughs> time spells. Yeah. It is like yeah, he's got problems. Take an extra turn, we'll get that kid a fucking erection. Yeah. Uh, so adding this into the cube cost me nothing really. It goes into the spells deck just fine. Goes into control reasonably well. Like Yeah, I trust the word of Ryan. Like he he knows his shit. So I don't think I'm like torpedoing my cube by having this deck here. No. I do think I'll get sick of my brother drafting it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's that's gonna be a tough one. Dude, stand still, let's I go. I gave you a single toy in standstill. I added it when I added the enchantment theme. And when I was cutting cards, I saw it and I was like, fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> i'll give him this one <laughs> uh, <laughs> like yeah omen of the seas is probably the right <laughs> <laughs> it, but, it doesn't matter that much let's stand still let's go black so into black it a lot of it is updates the aristocrats deck already plays well with yard based stuff so adding more yard based stuff just look to right uh yeah i mean there's a bit deep of like stinkweed imp <laughs> And Dark Blast. I hate Dark Blast. The card's trash. I love Dark Blast. It's like my it's favorite dredge card. I know it is, and it's trash. No, like the, the trash <laughs> dredge card is without a doubt Golgari Grave Troll. Yeah, it is. It, it is. It's, a, it's, a, it's not great, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but look, I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like Stinkweed Imp is like fine. Stinkweed Imp is probably the best one but to me dark blast is the best one yeah you're crazy <laughs> the the necron necrons just played so well because they're artifacts bingo that was the huge thing is a lot of them just being artifacts was already helpful and then they've got this weird perfect flow over of like half of them already have unearth on them which yeah. plays into the whole self mill stuff uh, I wanted an artifact lord, and Scorpec Lord is just way better at being an artifact lord that's not it's embarrassing in a vacuum compared to like Master of Ethereum. Scorpec Lord is a very good artifact lord. Yeah, <laughs> and and it's like you have to be playing black, which is something that like you're already doing in the artifact deck. Yeah, but like it's it's not like an obvious Boros. We'll just have it. He won't get stolen by a generic aggro deck like um, Porcelain Legionnaire would exactly yeah uh triarch praetorian is another one that made me very happy uh just being a two one flyer for two that's an artifact in black is like yep not good but like that is an acceptable fail case and then it's got the unearth for five where it draws two loses two that's i i think like without the fact that when you bring it from the graveyard to the battlefield you get more cards it wouldn't be good enough yeah it would not be good but like the card advantage on that whole package there yep. is very interesting. Especially yeah. because one of the things that you know I always have trouble with is when I'm playing the slow blue black deck. Mm-hmm. I'm always wanting late game payoff cards, yeah. but I'm wasting half my slots on stay alive early game cards. Yeah, And I know your opinions on how bad Spellskite is in your opinion. It's awful. It's <laughs> just trash. But it's it's trash that I kind of have to run. Uh, yeah. Trier I mean... Praetorian does a great job. In its role, though. Yeah. Where early game, you just play it out and trade with something. Like, yeah. you're just trying to stop the damage. Right. And, like, even if it doesn't trade and it just chumps, like, that's fine, too. It it, it, yeah. <laughs> it bought you a turn. Yeah. Then late game, it's got all your generic artifact synergies, all your generic grave stuff, and it's got the unearth that gets you extra value. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting. So here's the neat thing. It is when Triarch Praetorian enters the battlefield from the graveyard. Yep. Not when it's unearthed. Yeah. So you can bring it back as a, like because it's an artifact and maybe there's some stuff going on there. Yesterday, or... I drafted it with Goblin Engineer. And I was like, <laughs> I want to live this dream. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting one. So anyway, uh, a lot of the other cards in black are what you expect, basically. Like, they're all grave-based and stuff like that. Kill spells. Living Death is interesting. Living Death is here specifically to try to give some spice back. It's an old boomer card, I know. It is. But it's a fun-ass one. Yeah, it, I, I don't expect it to be amazing, but I think it'll be fine. There will be games where it's fucking hilarious. It's kind of like the Burning Wildfire, where like it's probably not good enough, 
but I'm still probably going to play it. <laughs> it's it's not that bad, though, because when you play Burning and Wildfire, you had to play a Burning or Wildfire deck, right? Right, whereas Living Death is slotting into decks that you're already... Yeah, you're playing your generic three-color graveyard mid-range deck. Yeah. You slap it in there, and some games you just go nutty. Yeah. Other games it sucks, but, you know, that's the price you pay for playing a card like it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes you play, uh, but... And we have all the generic reanimate stuff you expect to see. I did add Tomb Fortress to try it out as, like, uh, it's not a great land. It's a lot like Caracas, where, like, low value to play, low value to pick during a draft laid on a wheel. Does that go to Battlefield? Yes. It is. Okay essentially a six mana reanimate because it has to tap itself yeah. and pay five uh but it's just a tapped swamp yeah i was like it's still just a land which is nice as a backup i'm mixed on it i don't know how good it'll be yeah it'll be fine yeah i'm sure red red is still aggro it has a lot of stuff that is like gold hound is here because it plays so well into artifacty stuff uh artifact aggro is half back like it's not like a full like playing really bad cards that only work in that deck but like it works really well with toolcraft exemplar yeah i was just gonna say like toolcraft exemplar gold hound rabbit battery hey we got a we got a brew coming <laughs> like, and i think gold hound is honestly still really like good just to equip the fucker's got first strike menace i i actually think gold hound is a generically good card yeah. in cubes like you should actually be interested in it because first strike menace is strong and like and it's still a treasure Adding mana is not nothing. Yeah. If <laughs> if it lets you play that five drop that you've got in hand that can end yeah. the fucking game. Yeah, sometimes you want to play your five drop, uh, like Glory Bringer mm -hmm. or whatever, and like, yeah, it just gives you that extra little bit. So, yeah, I, I actually really do like that. And, yeah. Yeah, a lot of these are like a little weird, like, okay, Blazing Root Wall is only for my fetish not sold on that one that's that's for my fetish you leave it alone and that's fine goblin welder honestly i could just cut and put in a generic two one for one of your favorite variant i don't care yeah i just I, any deck that is going to use him in this style is going to be strong enough without him that it doesn't matter he's never good goblin welder sucks we could put in a generic red aggressive card that plays well with the artifact deck and i'd be just as happy yeah, that's fine. Uh, I, I really like Insolent Neonate. So do I. It, it's specifically for the Root Wall of Vengevine Hollow One yeah. deck. Like, that's why it's yeah. here. But it's just a 1 1 Menace for one that wears equipment well. So it works well in the equipment deck. It works well in the graveyard deck. Yeah, just being able to discard a card, having another creature go into the graveyard. Like, it's it does a lot of small things decently it is never your favorite card it's your least favorite one drop but it will end up in most of your decks yeah the the vast majority of decks it'll end up in that, that you drafted it and and that's a good spot to be in yeah uh thundering raiju is literally a patron putting me a gunpoint because they want me to try it i don't think it will be good uh well, uh, whatever i <laughs> it could be any other four drop uh, yeah the thing is is like we have yeah like you took out like Torbrand, Fireflux, Frontier Warmonger. Like, those are fine, good cards, but, like, they were all, like, just kind of, like, spiced to try and make it a little interesting. And there's five other new ones that do the same yeah. job. Like, so uh, it could be any of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so long as we're not getting rid of, like, Hellrider. No. He managed to stay glued. I didn't even <laughs> look at Hellrider. Yeah. It, the the time that you start looking at Hellrider, I'm we might need to sit down over. So going down to five drops, you didn't even notice. But this is this is a follow up from talking to the patrons and realizing that I wasn't alone in life. Glorybringer stayed. Thundermaw died, which makes sense. But in a vacuum, I completely disagree with. I don't. I feel like they're close, and Glorybringer A is healthier than Thundermaw. Yes, I agree with that. And B, Glorybringer got that fucking cast it, full boom, fucking feels so good. Thundermaw never yeah. feels like that. Well, I mean, Thundermaw feels like, hey, I just won the game. But like, it's <laughs> it's not the same as exerting a Glorybringer. It, it is not the same. You are correct. And they're they're close enough. I'm not yeah. too worried about it. And Fury's 
good. <laughs> yeah. I'm running most of that cycle. I didn't do yeah. endurance because like it's grave hate. Yeah, that's fair. I didn't do the blue one because I got talked out of it. Uh, it wasn't apparently very good. Okay. But I'm running white, red, and black. Yeah. Yeah. And then fucking lightning axe. Yeah, baby. Holy fuck. I've dude, I've played uh, how many lightning axes have I cast in modern? You've cast a lot. How many have rotted in your fucking hand? Fuck you. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh dude some of these some of these are gonna be (laughs) we we need to actually see which ones survive i'm aware i went deep to make certain things work i really am interested to see how burning inquiry does that one is actually really fucking good it seems very good to me but i'm like Am I just looking at all the good cases? <laughs> no, in standard, there was a red, black, like, yeah, yeah. not give a shit, discard your hand right at the end mm-hmm. of one Zendikar stuff. They, there was a really good one that yeah. played four Burning Inquiries, and it always felt fucking unfair playing against Burning Inquiry turn one. Yeah. When you play a red deck, like a blank red deck, red, black, whatever, um, when you play one where you're getting value out of the yard, mm-hmm. and you have that in your pool in your final list and you start like doing opening hands you can find some absolutely fucking disgusting opening hands where you're like turn one burning inquiry and it's basically gonna feel like i hemmed you yeah so that's the thing that gets me is like burning inquiry seems exceptionally strong on the play Mm -hmm. i wonder how strong it is on the draw so if you're in the hollow one deck then you're taking advantage of everything, so it doesn't really matter. It's Bingo. all synergies. Bingo. Right. So when you play it in the perfect thing, it doesn't really matter. Uh, when you're playing it for value in like a red-black aggressive deck that's that's just getting some yard value. Some decent synergy with the yard, and yeah. It's, it's more Feast and Famine in that case, yes. Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll be interested to see how that one goes, like I, some of these other ones. I'm pretty sure I know how they're going to end up, but it's worth testing with the density to see what we need to cut back to. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, red is still doing red things. <laughs> yeah. There is some weird ass cards, especially when you go through one drops and you're used to seeing yeah. normal red one drops and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever thought of Blazing Root Wall, this card's trash. I do love that the first thing you see is Blazing Root Wall. <laughs> It is. It's not it's like hidden like in the I... pile of weird shit. It's the first thing you see, and you're like, what the fuck did this asshole put in his cube? <laughs> this is just insane. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else, ignore it. I, this, this cube owner is just... I think I'll, I'll cut Welder, put in one more aggressive red one. Um, yeah. Probably one that I just like, even if it's not the best. Yeah, I don't... Uh... Technically, Falcon Wrath Gorger has like super minor maybe playability with the madness actually technically could happen. Uh, Stromkirk Noble does deal with plus one plus one counters technically. Uh, Zergo's just generically good. There, there's options. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any new ones that I'm interested in. There was one that was an artifact that I don't think you had. The any. Ronin. I cut him. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the Ronin. I cut him. Yeah. I think he could come back. I I could try him in the spot. Yeah, because he's got the channel sure um, discard stuff yeah. that goes on as well. So all right, we'll 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 try him in the slot and see what happens. It's not like I'm going to miss Welder. Yeah, I was like, we both know that we hate Welder. <laughs> like the card is ass. I shat on Goblin Engineer when it came out. I told you yeah. go fuck yourself. There's no way that's gonna be good. It's shitty Welder and Welder shit. Yeah. Goblin Engineer is far better than Goblin Welder. <laughs> <laughs> there's, yeah. Well, especially with what you're doing with the rest of the cube, there's more synergy. And, like, it, it does more than just nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, green. Green is where you'll find that quite a few Tyranids actually made the cut. <laughs> yeah, there's, well, Yeah. <laughs> we are only running 16 cards from the 40k set that's still a decent that's like a lot that's a actually. lot actually <laughs> that's that's quite a bit <laughs> i mean okay old one eyes insane that card's dumb <laughs> like, 
Like her is not okay. <laughs> I love that Hormagant Horde and Old One Eye work so well with the shit I was already doing. Right. And they were the one that I was like, ah, I want to put these in the cube. <laughs> but then I'm going to get made fun of putting the 40k cards in my cube. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like looking at the Necrons and I was like, fuck it. And I just did everything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care anymore. I'm just going to accept I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> I'm a hypocrite. You want me to say it? <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'll say. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Beyond that, like there isn't that much. Like we've already talked, like Vengefine, Gugari Grave Troll, the plus one plus one counters. I have concerns about Thrun leaving. I don't. Thrun is not that great anymore. Uh, the Disagree. problem is the problem is he's <laughs> he's worse than Questing Beast. The difference is. I fucking hate Questing Beast. Yeah, that's I fair. I fucking hate Questing Beast. So I just removed both. And yeah, it's it's likely fine. I think we have enough. I honestly, I could add another four drop. I could add Thrun back, but I have to find a cut, which probably means just doing more testing to figure out what's not working in certain archetypes and all that. But Thrun, Thrun could come back. My problem with Thrun is he doesn't do anything for anything. He's just a fucking dude. And that's that's exactly what I was trying to cut. He gives green a chance against control. <laughs> I, I don't know if it needs it that much anymore. We've gotten so many good so Maybe. many good ways to abuse grave value and to not care if something gets countered up front and like it, Maybe. you can get back like Hormagon Horde, old one eye. You've got a bunch of different cards that just care about the yard anyway. That's true. I mean, yeah, maybe maybe with the yard focus stuff. Green green is less mono deck. It's not as ramp only anymore, where it was like you play a boring mid-range deck that happens to have green because green has efficient creatures or you're playing ramp. Right. Now there's more variance to what you'll be wanting to do in your green deck, and I think it will be less shat on. I think until testing. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, dude. I it's still it's still one of those that like it was so far of like green just auto loses to control decks. Thrun also sucked in pod decks. Yeah, it was. It, it did not suck. It just wasn't particularly good. It still filled that hole that you needed of like. That's my problem. Is like I want I want a spicier card in that slot than Thrun or Questing Beast. I don't want just generic body that's good. Yeah, uh, yeah, I I get it, and I and I think you do have reasons to believe that with the graveyard stuff that the, we can get away from it but like same time like having just like that generic this is good four drop was nice yeah <laughs> uh but yeah i mean there's not that much beyond that like life from the realm's neat yeah remembering that creature combo is still alive and better than ever is another thing oh yeah like creature combo has tools everywhere except for basically blue um and yeah. and Boy, oh boy, can you end up with a disgusting version of that deck based off my testing. There's a lot of ways to tutor up those pieces nowadays. That's true. Yeah, I mean, there was, there's always been a decent amount, but... And there's a lot of redundancy for certain pieces now, too. I think that's a huge part, is that we keep getting more and more redundancy to those effects. The roughest part tends to be the one that you're abusing the, the persist s slot, like whatever you're yeah. abusing there. Finks or yeah. um, Red Cap or whatever. That's yeah. that's the roughest one. You basically pick, snap pick it as soon as you get it. Snap pick the next one, no matter what you're sacrificing for it. Yeah. And then the rest of the deck will fall into place. There's a ton of redundancy for those slots. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's still, you're going to want to get the sack yeah. reasonably high. But yeah, the, the Red Cap, that part of it. If you see it and you're going into it, you take it. Like, yeah. yeah I, so on that. unfortunately, there wasn't room for Thrun or Questing Beast to stay. Luckily, I found it in my heart to find a spot for Plowlander to stay. <laughs> Shocking everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, into the multicolor stuff. There's some little additions all over the place. Um, blue, black. So you've got Master of Death playing into the whole graveyard stuff. And then two Tezzerets back. The the rest is already was there. Red Black. Red Black has been the roughest <laughs> one to deal with, by the way. 
uh, I was playing Cast Through Hell or whatever. It's Red Black's version of uh, Fractured Identity. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I remember seeing that. I, yeah. I ended up cutting it because there just wasn't room for it with all the things I need Red Black to be able to do. Uh, <laughs> Chaos Defiler ended up being a really good glue piece. That motherfucker is really goddamn good in several decks. It's weird. Well, it looks like a mess. It's just so strong. It does look like a mess, but honestly, that artifact. Being an artifact is big. The fact that it's when it enters or dies, it does the um, council's judgment. Well, yeah, it destroys, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. but the, the key thing is it gets around like Hexproof Shroud, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a 5-4 Trample 5 is not great. It's not great, but it's a 5-4 Trample 5 getting left behind after you council's judgment. Yeah. Like, compare it to a mana down, and we all fucking love um, Chupacabra. Yeah. <laughs> well, still a lot better. But <laughs> I don't know if Chupacabra is better at all. Like, the. Yeah, it is. This is. This is. For the extra mana, the body gets fucking big, and you upgrade the type of murder and the murder on death. The murder on death's nice. And again, it's not straight up. It, it's not murder because it's it gets around certain types of protection that you couldn't. It's interesting. I, I don't think it's bad. Gruel is, like, super goddamn fun. <laughs> Moloch <laughs> is so right. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's exactly Gruel. Like, <laughs> Ravenous is Gruel. Yeah, right? It's like, <laughs> like it's essentially a seven drop. It's such a perfect ability for Gruel. Like, I love it. Yeah, when it needs to come down early, it can. And it will be not embarrassing, and it will save the day when you need it to. When yeah. it's a seven drop, it's a goddamn monster. Yeah. Uh, not sure about Shadow and the Warp. It's fine. It's good. Uh, I had Cinder Vines in, and I just swapped it for Shadow and the Warp because I thought this is neat. I want to give it a shot. I, it's it is the most changeable. Yeah. It's it's the spot of like, what do you want to try? That's kind of the same. Yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna put Grum Gully in there? Not really. <laughs> Yeah. I'm trying to think of like what else like could be there. It's like Cinder Vines, Three Drop Domri. So like there's there's different things that can go in the slot. But yeah. That's that's the flex slot. Uh Selesnia, Conclave Mentor, that's a good magic okay. card. Sure. Like if you're trying to push plus one plus one counters. Yeah. It's an on theme or it's an on color snake. Because the problem is I don't want to just add back constrictor because constrictor is not in the right colors and it's so fucking awkward. <laughs> It did not work. I I don't know. I guess I don't care. Like, it's Selesnia. I'll give shit. Yeah. <laughs> what about the King Darien? Uh, he does He does do the creatures dying makes tokens thing, which is like, that's a neat crossover between the decks. I could, okay, okay. We'll try Darien. I mean, I... No, we'll try I'm Darien. Just... I, think, I think I've argued myself into him as I said that to you trying to remember other options that we've like brought up that are like interesting kind of things lately this change was finalized hours ago the the plus one plus one counter deck there there was shitty fucking enchantment matter shit in that slot <laughs> okay we'll we'll try darian i like that yeah orzov priest of fell rights cruel celebrant that's probably but i don't care enough <laughs> we're still doing what we need to do in Orzov. I almost cut Dak Faden and is it the only reason he stayed is that his plus one is so goddamn correct for the discard stuff. I was going to say that <laughs> that's interesting. Given all of the things that you've added to blue and red that are just generally not good cards that have that line on it. <laughs> it's, it's rough. Cause like I still <laughs> fucking hate Dak. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I get it. I get it. Uh, Lutri, we've always been like, yeah, it's just fine, whatever. I don't care about Lutri, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I cut that in a second. Yeah, Pink Horror is interesting. I really like it. I really think it's quite good. Yeah. Uh, so I'm hoping that one does well. I just went further into Golgari being what Golgari does. I got rid of all of the fucking destroy some things except for Assassin Trophy, which you could run a b- Brup Decay here. It doesn't matter what you pick. I'm so sad about Pernicious Deed. <laughs> we got Pernicious Deed turned colorless. All I did was move it to colorless. Yeah, but Pernicious Deed's still Pernicious Deed, man. Oh, fuck off. Now it's an artifact. I want to boomer on that one, but... Now it's an artifact. <laughs> <laughs> the future is yeah, now, I mean, old man. 
in his. Yeah. Hogak's probably pretty good. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> it's probably pretty good. Uh, Four Drop Vraska is actually very good now. I was not that big a fan of her previously. <laughs> Uh, i had to push her so hard for you to even like accept that she wasn't trash yeah she's she's pretty good now uh grist <laughs> is really good by the way uh yeah like i haven't gotten a test too much it's a three drop it doesn't feel like a three drop it feels like a four drop i haven't read the mh2 reviews that people have sent in yet they're all sitting in the mh2 folder i'm going to assume that generically she won't be rated as highly as i've rated her while testing this week yeah uh but I made this cube very centric on doing graveyard stuff. And so, so now she, she has been doing fucking work. Uh, she, you just, you're blown away every time the fucking static ability works exactly as you want it to. You're right. Like, There's no way I'm doing this right. <laughs> it It is a weird ability. Like it just, it reads like an uncard. It, it really does. Especially because of all the interactions that it, it enables interactions that don't feel like it should have been, mm-hmm. but like it, it's clearly written in a way that like that was supposed to be. Yeah, Boros. Boros is look. It's it's better than it's ever been. It is better than it's ever been. I'm excited for Showdown of the Scalds because like everyone was telling us how great that was. Yeah, everybody did say, and I hope they had. I hope they didn't lead us wrong. Even if this isn't an amazing Boros section, I'm fairly confident it's still the best we've ever had. So. <laughs> uh another tyranid yay actually tyranid prime dude this card was such a perfect last second ad other creatures you control have evolved and it has evolved yeah and importantly to, to give you the long short of it it triggers creatures when it enters because of scape shift rules the the things always see the thing entering as, as they already have the static ability yeah so this is actually a really good on curve play when you are playing the the counters deck if you've got like an experiment one and then a random two drop in play. Yeah, it just gives counters around. And continues to do so. And continues to do so, exactly. Yeah. And because Evolve is so correct on being like greater power or toughness, mm-hmm. like Tyranid Prime is going to keep growing. Right. I really liked it, including that card. There's actually Trigon Prime, who apparently peasants were really liking. I couldn't argue it in a rare cube. But it was like okay. kind of close, and I'm like, this is adorable. If I had like a 40k cube, I would totally do this. <laughs> I'm still surprised that's not what we're talking about today. No. <laughs> but yeah, I, I actually I I think Tyranid Prime will play quite well. It's very good in the Simic, and it's got a good bleed over with the plus one plus one counter. I almost cut Uro for a random counters or any other thing that's not Uro, uh, <laughs> mostly out of spite. Yeah, I was like, I feel like I know why, even though, yeah, you know. But but I <laughs> I cut Oko, and that was enough. <laughs> so Uro got to live. And technically, his, his escape bullshit means he's actually part of the graveyard theme, so whatever. There's a reason yeah. <laughs> that you can kind of make up for it. I mean, the Oko kill is probably wrong, but that's fine. I'm not going to fight it. Rolesk has never been better. Dude, I cannot wait for the Rolusk into Crisis. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, uh, Broker's Ascendancy was a today thing, by the way. I didn't even realize that card got made. And I was like, this is yeah. possibly good. And like, Bant had nothing until today. I'm just reading it. <laughs> I'm assuming this is from Capenna. Yeah. Yeah. At the beginning of your end step, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control in a loyalty. Okay. Now, I did not add, but there is a three mana do nothing enchantment in green. Imagine that. <laughs> uh, that is doubling season, but it only works on plus one plus ones. Yeah, I remember that. I debated it. I don't think that one's worth it. This one I like because it's causing the counters. Uh, I'm playing that Gilf in uh, white. The one with the fucking 90s fucking fantasy name, Lazel Valkith's champion, and it's just a fucking gibberish, slap your keyboard, make a 90s fantasy character. Right. But she does the, if counters would be put on you or Planeswalker or creature, you put one more of it, and she's a 3-3 for 3. Right. So she'll play well into that deck, and like, there could be some goddamn explosive shit in a Bant counters deck where you're just plopping out three fucking counters on your field in a single go 
Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is, like, the first counter is always the most important. It is. It, it so absolutely is. A three-drop do-nothing that doubles is so much less interesting than the... Three-drop that causes, yes. Yeah. That was my reasoning as to why one isn't and the other isn't. So, I still don't know if Broker's Ascendancy is going to be... I don't know if it'll be good, but Bant had no good card that I wanted, so... <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing is, is like, I... Maybe just don't. <laughs> right? I, I cut a random fixing land that we didn't need, and I was like, there we go. We'll try it out. Sure. Yeah, it's fine for a try. Naya, we have like the one. <laughs> yeah, we finally have one that's kind of interesting. It's the tokeny oh, yeah. lady. Yeah. Ginny Faye. Maelstrom Wanderer. Go <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> there is a couple I could have done in Rug, but only one of them says Cascade, Cascade. <laughs> <laughs> holy shit dude the worst part is half the time i use maelstrom wanderer cheated into play anyway because he's exactly. so fucking good off of eureka <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's funny oh man he's he's so goddamn good when you cheat him in with your whole fucking team and just be like kill you yeah but anyway he could be five other things there are several good options oh, yeah. I, whatever just guy actually it's... has a new one so i kept in kai car who is the one we had in on last year's build yeah there was some new card that i actually wanted your opinion on but i couldn't ask you because you would be like why are you randomly asking me this <laughs> uh, you don't give a shit about a three color <laughs> jess guy card yeah. in 2022 what are you doing what, what the fuck are you <laughs> doing here get up um <laughs> that would have that would have immediately told you what i had been working on <laughs> there would have been a lot of questions and i would have probably figured out <laughs> very quickly yeah i mean I, I can't think of any new ones it is hanata dawn crown which is one blue red white for a 4-4 flying trample kieran spirit legendary um it has spells you cast cost one less to cast for each target spells your opponent's cast cost one more to cast for each target notably almost every spell has at least one target right well not like ramp but you get the point yeah I... your time warp becomes a four drop your opponent's burn spells become terrible your burn spells become disgusting doesn't die to lightning bolt like kai car yeah that's another one too right <laughs> the fourth toughness is always juicy ain't it <laughs> the so the thing is is like they both die to lightning axe i look <laughs> <laughs> gotcha <laughs> you're not wrong <laughs> i look at these two and i'm like I like Kaikar more because it's more interesting to me. Mm -hmm. But Inada is probably just better because of its like base power. Flying trample four four taxes your opponent. Like like there's that's just strong. I didn't swap them basically solely because Kaikar was already in from last year's thing. Yeah, but I'm kind Whatever. of indifferent on which one we go yeah. with. Neither of them really break like the mold of what you're trying to do in Jeskai no. to be. Like it's not, and I they're close enough, so whichever one you're interested in, I don't care. Bird Wizard. I still I want Whirlwind of Thought to be slightly better than it is. It's one blue, red, white for an enchantment, so it's a four drop, do nothing enchantment. <laughs> but it's whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw. I like that. Right? It's the one where I was like, shit. Take take the one off of it, and it'd be dirty. We'd be we'd be talking, yeah. If you could on turn four cast it and immediately ponder, <laughs> yeah, dude, or bolt or whatever, and like it would still be like a decent commitment, cause three colors. Yeah, yeah, but like at four mana, I think it's still too much as a do nothing. Yeah, at three mana do nothing, it's right there. Yeah, three mana do nothings are like, hey, maybe we could figure something out. Four mana do nothings, we got you're probably dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, Urborg. Lurgoy is so cool. It's like my favorite fucking card I added. It card. works in every fucking way I needed it to. They honestly knocked it out of the park on that card. Yeah. Like that's just such a a fun, cool, exciting design. Yeah. I like it. I put it in Saltai and I put Banana Man Tassiger in mono black because <laughs> with Tassiger I don't care what my secondary colors are. I'm just playing him because right. he's a fucking Dell four five. Uh, yeah. With this, you have to be playing green plus at least blue or black, possibly both. Honestly, you're expecting to be both. 
But like you'll probably cast it for only two of the colors. Yeah, you might cast it for all three. Yeah, it's gonna be great when you do that. But like you'll usually only want to cast it for the two just to get the val- extra value, and then mm-hmm. you know you're you're lower on the curve. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then colorless. I don't think there's any shocks for you. Like it's all what you expect. I'm not sold on the arc on Ravager. It it's important. It's awkward, right? Like it's yeah. my least favorite that I run in that two drop slot, but I have to because it's very unique in what it does. Yeah, I accept that. <laughs> um, and whatever. It's less awkward when I have more aggressive artifact stuff. Yes, but that's not actually like being pushed. If if I pump those numbers up just a little bit with a couple last second changes, then I think Ravenger will feel better. Uh, I know one of the patrons was trying to argue me modular cards. There's a modular Boros Lord who's actually pretty good. Arcbound Shikari. It is a 0-0 zero, zero for one red white. Artifact creature, cat soldier. First strike. When Arcbound Shikari enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each other artifact creature you control. And it itself is modular too. That's not bad. Like, I could cut the worst Boros card, add that in. <laughs> Cut one or two red cards to add some good aggressive. Get the Ronin back in instead of. Put Ronin in instead of, yeah, instead of Welder. And then probably do one change in white. Oh, I have to get rid of Rip anyway. Perfect. Yeah. That'll make Arcbound Ravager feel better. Yeah. There, that'll be enough that, like, you can actually tilt the artifact aggro. Yeah. To, like, actually take advantage of Ravager instead of just being, like, yeah, playing it because it's fine and it does its thing, I guess. <laughs> and then Helm of Obedience will turn into some other more aggressive artifact. Yeah. I did put in Cauldra Complete. Made fun of it when it came out. Came around to it almost immediately. It's all the way down in seven drops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, Living Weapon's cool. It, it's very neat. Mind Slaver's in, Planar Bridge is in. I see you trying to fucking pass by getting rid of Scroll of Fate, trying to (laughs) make me not notice that you're getting rid of the Manifest card. Fuck you. Cards suck. (laughs) It was not good, but still. I think I'm going to move the Talismans out of Colorless and into their guilds just for a, like, so I can easily scroll through Colorless easier. That's up to you. Slightly annoying that they're in the way. I, I need to make that change later. They're not, they're, they're technically like, they're colorless. You play them if you only need one of the colors. Like they're, they're, yeah. but I'm putting them in the guilds for my own brain when I am going yeah. through my list and I'm like, God damn it. I'm trying to read my two <laughs> drops. I see the uh, artifact lands. <laughs> only, I don't know if any of them actually made it in the final cut. No, they're all gone. Uh, oh no, I kept the colorless one. Oh, okay. Uh, they were all in. Then four were in, then three were in, then zero were in. Wow. I could run multiple of them. I could argue up to four. I can never argue the green one. It's terrible. Uh, but the other four I can argue. Yeah. I kept three of them in, but I was making final cuts and I was like, they're always awkward when you're drafting because you're like, just wheel them, wheel them a second time, grab mm-hmm. it as your 14th pick. And it's like unfair that it's eating a cube slot for it. We do have the fixing artifact ones now. So. Yes, which I actually am running. That is something I should point out. Mist Vault Bridge, Dross Forge Bridge. I'm running both of those in Demir and Rakdos. Yeah. I didn't go crazy and put them in other colors, but those two were really good. You also have the uh, Silver Bluff Bridge, the blue-red. Oh, the blue-red one. I did put that one in because I couldn't think of anything I'd rather have there. I think that's actually pretty cool because like, I like the blue red artifacts mm-hmm. with like gear for aether grid you just love aether grid we know i do love aether grid but like pia and kira nalar like that kind of that is how i like drafting the artifacts deck like the slow e oh technically new to my queue i i added all 10 triumphs i didn't even talk about that but yeah i we know they're really good yeah that was like i think that was a foregone clu- <laughs> conclusion that we were gonna do that but yeah those are in two yeah yeah i think that's about everything this was Many weeks of work now. Yeah, dude. It's been a long one. It was really annoying because there were several times when I was like, fuck, I want to have Eric look at this. And then we were eating sushi (laughs) and I was like partway through an update and I wanted, I was like, no, don't do it. It'll be way better to do it on air. (laughs) So. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean... Now we can actually do sushi and go do last-second changes before I have to order all these cards and blow my brains out. <laughs> like, yeah, sell the the one land. Sell the crate, I'll buy a cube <laughs> upgrade. <laughs> yeah, and have money left over. Well, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I actually don't think so. Some of these cards yeah. are goddamn expensive. I was like, some of these are... Fucking Triumphs are up to, like, $20 already. What the fuck? Yeah. I got the original set when IKO came out, so I only have to buy the new awful ones. Um, I'm still mad about the fact that those new ones are just heinously named. <laughs> just, I, oh, God damn it, Wizards. When you guys hear all this, I hope you enjoy the, the weird just us <laughs> talking about a cube update so you can see what that's like. But when you hear all this, obviously the things that we've been debating, you probably are staring at the end result of in the list. Yeah. And you may have seen one or two things from when we get sushi this weekend and do last second changes before this episode goes live. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to convince them to do too crazy. But no, uh... there's probably going to be 10, 20 cards that are different than what we talked about on this episode. But there you go. This has been me finally updating my cube. Now I have to buy all these damn cards and then sleeve them and and i should probably just pull the trigger and do a full resleeve because we have to buy more sleeves is it time to just do the resleeve because we're already going to be doing like 300 cards and and not only are we doing 300 cards i have to upgrade my cube box <gasps> oh no on the plus side kakapoko already makes a larger size and i'm just gonna go back to them <laughs> i love my cube box it's like fucking amazing Fair enough yeah i know there's other fair. ones we could test like the dex one and there's a couple others that people like but i love my cube box i'm not changing <laughs> yeah no that's fair i was i was gonna say like we could try something but no like this one works it's nice yep i will go buy their bigger size <laughs> so there you have it that was this episode as a final warning i'm not telling you to do these changes to your own cubes no do not follow me off my cliff follow metaphorically off the cliff but your own cliff yeah that's the real lesson to take out of this <laughs> so don't turn your cube into mine and then go man this sucks i hated it it's like no shit sherlock i built it for my specific group yeah you put a fucking basking root wall in your cube you idiot <laughs> put a bench vine in your cube <laughs> bench vine's like sort of boomer debatable but like Basking root wall is like the, I put this in here and I was giggling typing it out. <laughs> I love basking root wall. Yeah. <laughs> the worst part is like blazing root wall is really pretty good. It's weirdly good. Like the fire, I mean... the double fire breathing on its roof.